So the code for GCD is going to be quite simple. All I need to do is just take in two integers A and B, and then I'll need to print out the GCD. So this is going to be a recursive function for us initially, and then we can think of uh, making it iterative and finally go for binary GCD. Um, if you think about the recursive bit, it's quite easy actually. Uh, there's just return if b is equal to zero, just say a is the GCD, right? That's the algorithm that we uh, talked about in in the explanation on the whiteboard. Otherwise, we are going to be recursively calling the same method GCD on b comma a mod b, right? This gives you the remainder of a when divided by b. This is b itself, and therefore we should have the answer right here. So you can see that this code is extremely small, uh, and uh, just for some fancy stuff, I can make it a single line code also, right? So this is the recursive way in which we can find the GCD. Uh, there's also the iterative way. So I'll just call that. Right. Now the iterative way is going to be uh, having more code, of course, but it's faster for the computer to actually find the GCD that way. Okay. So initially, I'll just say return. Let's say zero, right? We don't we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, now inside, what we're going to do is while b is not equal to zero, we are going to do some stuff. And finally, you see that what we are going to return effectively is a itself, right? So let's let's change these. We are just going to pass these parameters, not as constants. Uh, and finally, what I want is the GCDB to be stored in A. Okay, so if B is becomes zero, then A has to be returned. Now, what I need to do inside here, I need to take a temporary variable and say that A is equal to in, in which I'll be storing uh, in which I'll be storing A or Inside this, I need to take a temporary variable and say b, when a is divided by b, this is what I get. a should become then b, and b should become this temporary variable. All right, that makes sense because what happens is if, if I do this, then a becomes b, and b tries to become the remainder of a with b, but then a has already been assigned the other value. So I can't do that. I need a temporary variable, and this helps me actually uh, compute the GCD because I'm taking the remainder of a with b. I'm assigning a to the current value of b and b to this remainder, right? And iterative GCD is going to give you, the, of course, the exact same answer. And asymptotically, it has the same complexity, but this is faster for the computer to evaluate because it doesn't need any stack memory. It doesn't need any uh, it doesn't need those recursive calls right so finally but finally the algorithm that most compared programmers will be using is the binary gcd algorithm and this is going to be taking the same parameters of course returning the same answer but it's going to be much faster in terms of the machine being able to process this right so again over here what we're going to do is we're going to return a in in the end and we are going to be manipulating a and b till the point that we find the gcd so the first thing is if b is equal to zero, then we can just return a, right? Uh, otherwise, what we are going to do is we are going to find the common multiple of two between a and b, and we are going to store it somewhere. So I'm just going to say common multiple of two, which is initially just one, right? Uh, there's there's no common multiple yet. Now, while a mod 2 equal to equal to 0, so a is even and b is even, I need to say the common multiple of 2 is being multiplied by 2. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing this till both 
integers are even, and I'm going to store it in a common multiple of two by going on multiplying it by two. Okay. Uh, now, once this is done, I know that either a or b is no longer even. Okay, that's that's pretty important to know. Either a or b is no longer even. Uh, if one of them is not even, and so if one is odd and the other is even, it means that two is not a common divisor between these two numbers anymore. Okay, so bit, I can remove that two. So while a mod two equal to zero, I can just say divide a by two. Right, and of course I need to do that over here also. So I'm taking the common multiples, but I'm I forgot to actually divide it by two a and b. Okay, now. There are a few things that you can notice in this program already. Uh, the the reason why we're doing binary GCD is because we want to make it as fast as possible uh, to get the GCD. These operations are expensive, finding the modulo. And in fact, if we want to do this, why aren't we just going through the iterative GCD, which uses lesser modulo operations? Uh, the reason for that is because actually two is a very interesting number for a computer, so it can use binary operations like this. But I'm going to say once I and a with one, so the last bit is what I'm interested in. Is the last bit equal to zero? If that is the case, then a is even, right? That that's the meaning of anding with one and getting a zero. The number is then divisible by two. Also, common multiple of two started with one. I need to multiply it by two. What what can I do uh, which is going to actually help me do that? I can left shift it by one. That's equal to multiplying it by two. right? And I can just uh, make it a little more obvious. This way. A needs to be divided by two. So I can right shift it by one. And you can have a look at uh, the video that I took on bitwise manipulation for a clearer understanding. But all I'm doing is dividing or multiplying things by two or one, uh, by two or uh, yeah, just two. <laughs> so now there's a is even, and again I divide a by two, right? Right shifting by one is equivalent to dividing a number by two. Left shifting by one is equal to multiplying that number by two. Okay, so now that we are made a little more efficient in terms of binary, what I can say is we need to get into uh, the main part of the algorithm. So till now we have taken out all common multiples of two, which are in this in between these two numbers. We have also made sure that in case A, we have also made sure that A is definitely odd now. Till, till A is odd, uh, till A is even, we are just going on dividing it by two. So at one point of time, it has to go odd. Uh, in the worst case, it will become one, but that's actually not the worst case. It's a really good thing. Okay, so now we need to use the standard algorithm, which is while b is not equal to zero, we are going to do something. Okay, if b is equal to zero, just return a. Right, that makes sense. Um, while b is not equal to zero, while b is even, right? So while b is even. I'm going to divide b by 2. Okay, this is going to happen all the time. Every time that I'm going to be uh, getting into this procedure, I'm going to be making sure that b is odd before it touches the remaining part of the algorithm. And what is the remaining bit? At this point of time, you are guaranteed that a and b are odd, which means a minus b is even, which in turn means that uh, a minus b you know the the standard thing of euclid's algorithm is you take the remainder so what i could do is also subtract from a b i could subtract b from a basically uh, so let's do that let's see a minus b come into action which is integer temporary is going to be a minus b b is going to be equal to or rather a is going to be equal to b itself and b is equal to 10. 
right? So what happens here? Temporary is equal is an even number. A is assigned an odd number, and B becomes therefore an even number. So if this is the case, then B is definitely an even number. I want to remove all factors of two from it because A is odd, B is even. Two is not a common divisor between these two numbers, uh, and what I then need to do is I need to come back, check if b is equal to zero. If that is not the case, I need to come in again and go on dividing b by one. Okay, uh, are there any problems possible in this algorithm? A minus b might be might be greater than b, in which case our assumption that a is always greater than b is being broken. So what I can do here then is that check if a is less than b. All I need to do is again take a temporary variable and swap these two numbers. So I'm going to be saying temp swap, and that's over here. Uh, this becomes a. A becomes b. And b becomes temp swap. So I'm just swapping these two numbers, right? In fact, in Python it's much simpler, but in Java we have to write some code. Um, getting rid of the comments, you can see that this code is still quite verbose, quite long, but it's much faster for the computer to actually evaluate this. Uh, and let's let's try to run all three algorithms. So I'm going to say recursive GCD, iterative GCD, and binary GCD. So Taking an example of 5,3, we should be getting 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, 5 and 3, we get 1 everywhere. So, uh, what about 110? So, there's a bug in our binary GCD program. What could it be? So the reason I wanted to actually point this out is because most people forget uh, what the common multiple of 2 is for uh, these two numbers. So when you're returning a, you can't just do that. You have to say the common multiple of 2 is to be multiplied by this, right? So uh, let's run the program again. And I'll just zoom in for some clarity. Uh, 110 gives us 10, 10, 10. And, uh, let's let's also try equal numbers 21 and 21 this is 21 finally 21 and 7 gives us 7 okay so these are the three algorithms uh, the main algorithms of uh, binary gcd or rather of gcd and then you know there's three ways in which you can actually implement it i would suggest go for the binary gcd because it's not too complicated to implement uh, and it's more fun in a way because the computer does it faster. It entirely depends also on the contest. If it's a short contest, probably the recursive method is enough or the iterative one is enough. Uh, but if it's, a, if it's a question which requires tremendous computations in terms of binary GCD, uh, then Newt actually suggests that you, you would have at least 20% increase in processing power. Or rather, a twenty percent saving in processing power using this algorithm. <coughs> so go ahead and try this out. Uh, GCDs are pretty important. I have a Code Chef question link in the description below. If you have any doubts or suggestions, of course, leave them in the comments below. I'll be coming up soon with another interesting algorithm.